The crew of the Nostromo set down on planet LV-426 in response to a distress signal beacon, following standard company procedure with the proviso that the crew would be compensated for their efforts. As we would eventually learn, the transmission was not a call for help, but instead meant to serve as a warning. But exactly how much did Weyland Yutani know of what would be found on this planet, and how much was a response to Kane bringing the alien facehugger and embryo inside him aboard after finding the xenomorph eggs inside the space jockey? Special Order 937, a classified retrieval order accessible to science officer eyes only, entailed that Weyland Yutani's number one priority was to bring back the alien life form from LB 426 and ensure it is protected to bring back for further analysis, likely as Ripley presumes for use in their bioweapons division. The order explicitly states that all crew are expendable in this retrieval, and the order was not only set in place as soon as Weyland Yutani detected and decoded the transmission, but even anticipated by the company for the Nostromo and for other possible ships along similar routes, explaining the last minute switch of science officers before the crew of the Nostromo took off. In the official novelization, some further clarification is offered after Ripley accesses Mother, the ship's computer, and begins putting the pieces together. Realizing that Ash has been protecting the alien from the very beginning, someone wanted a slave observer to report developments back to them. The company's drone probes must have picked up on the transmission from the derelict. The Nostromo happened to be the next company vessel scheduled to pass through the spatial quadrant, and that Ash was put on board to ensure Special Order 937 was successfully followed. If the follow-up on the transmission turned out to be worthless, it would be reported back without the rest of the crew ever knowing what was going on. If worthwhile, then the company learns what it needs to know before it goes to the trouble of sending out an expensively equipped exploration team. Once he is dismantled and interrogated, Ash admits he was directed to reroute the Nostromo, or to make sure the crew rerouted it from its assigned course so that it would pick up on the signal. He programmed Mother to awaken the crew from hypersleep and reprogrammed her memory to feed them the story about the emergency call. Company specialists already knew the transmission was a warning and not a distress signal. Ash explains, at the source of the signal, we were to investigate a life form, almost certainly hostile, according to what company experts distilled from the transmission, and bring it back for observation and company evaluation for any potential commercial applications, using discretion, of course. Through Ash's explanation, Ripley is able to surmise the reasoning behind the company's execution of this plan, and why a comparatively meek crew had been chosen to unknowingly carry out these orders beyond the expense of sending in a valuable exploration team first. Importation to any inhabited world, let alone Earth, of a dangerous alien life form is strictly prohibited. By making it look like we simple tug jockeys had accidentally stumbled onto it, the company had a way of seeing it arrived on Earth unintentionally. While we maybe got ourselves thrown in jail, something would have to be done with the creature. Naturally, company specialists would magnanimously be standing on the ready to take this dangerous arrival off the hands of the customs officers, with a few judicious bribes prepaid, of course, just to smooth the transition. And if we were lucky, the company would bail us out and take proper care of us, as soon as the authorities determined we were honestly as stupid as we appeared. Ash confirms these suspicions, stressing that in order for the company's plan to run as smoothly as possible, no one could know about the true reasoning behind the Nostromo setting down on LV-426 and investigating the derelict ship, further elaborating that it would be within the company's best hopes that the crew would survive this transitional process, but most certainly secondary in priority, and of course, nothing personal. It would seem that Special Order 937 was anything but improvisational, and that the order was intricately planned out, possibly in response to the disastrous events that occurred with the crew of the Prometheus many years earlier. The question remains, with Order 937 in place for such an undetermined amount of time, between the arrival of the jockeys, the warning signal, and other company vessels supposedly on the ready, do you think other crews may have been involved with this order, either before the Nostromo's involvement or sometime before the colonization of Hadley's Hope on the planet years later? The Nostromo may very well not be the only crew affected by this order. Thank you very much for watching, guys. I really appreciate it. Please be sure to subscribe for more videos like this, and if you have an alien universe subject you'd like to see explored, please comment below. Until next time, this is Alien Theory, signing off.